Well, it is a Marvel movie, and I'm a movie critic, so if I'm understanding correctly, I'm legally obligated to love it, right? There is no such thing as spirit. We are made of matter and nothing more. You're just another tiny, momentary speck within an indifferent universe. You think too little of yourself. Oh, you think you see through me, do you? Well, you don't. But I see through you! I pushed your astral form out of your physical form. What's in that tea? Psilocybin? LSD? It's just tea. With a little honey. Doctor Strange is the latest Marvel movie starring Benedict Cumberbatch as a physician turned metaphysician. Does it work that way? And what happens when he has to use his new powers to save the world? Doing a lesser known property seemed to work well for Marvel with Guardians of the Galaxy. How does it work here? Here's five things you might want to know about Doctor Strange. Let's just start where everybody else is probably starting, which are the visuals. They are incredible. There's a reason people are talking about it. I was telling somebody just yesterday that I don't know if I've seen visuals that blew my mind this much since the first time I saw The Matrix, which was like 20 years ago. It's that good. Uh, see it on as big a screen as you can. See it in 3D if you can. I think it's probably worth the effort to do so. Not only that, the visuals are not only stunning, but they inform the story, and that's why they're so good, because they help tell this story in a way I don't think it could have been told without them. Also stunning, Benedict Cumberbatch. What a great actor. He treats this character in this performance with such a real depth and a genuine attack of it that you can't help but be drawn into what he's doing here. You believe the importance of this story because he believes the importance of this story. I will say, just as a slight negative in this one, uh, I had trouble buying the accent, but it's just because I've seen so much Sherlock and I know what he really sounds like when he's doing his English accent. To, so to hear him do an American accent was distracting, but I think that's my fault, not his, because I think he's phenomenal in this. And when you really pick it apart, I think it stands up. Plus, this movie's funny. It's got some great humorous moments. Actually, let's strike that because a lot of people will compare DC to Marvel. You know, Marvel, they do humor and DC, they're too dark. And it's not that actually. I want to use a different word. It's actually that it's charming. There's a difference between being funny and being charming. When somebody is charming or when a movie is charming, it just draws you in in a way that it's likable. You want to be around it. It's a good hang. And that's what Marvel movies are to me. They're always a good hang. I don't feel the same way necessarily with other movies, but when it comes to these superhero movies, I feel like I want to be there and I'm having a good time. And I think that's a big deal. Here's something else the movie deserves props for. Uh, it's weird. There's a lot of weird stuff to try to explain here, but I think they do a good job. You think of the level of difficulty on something like this, right? Where you've got, you know, all these different planes of existence, you know, astral projections and mirror worlds and all this stuff. And then you've got time manipulation that's going on as well. There's a lot to explain here and a lot going on. And yet I think the movie pulls it off pretty well. I will say some of that does lead to my one negative about the movie. Uh, because it is a lesser known property and people don't know anything about who this is and what this world is, there's a lot of exposition to do here. Not just with the weird stuff that we talked about. They handle that pretty well. I mean more with the origin story stuff. Who is this character? Who does he relate to? How does he get into this thing? And I do think the movie suffers a little bit at the beginning, a little bit of the slow pacing that happens uh, that drags it down for maybe the first 20 to 30 minutes. After that, it moves along really, really well, but I do think the pacing suffers right in the beginning. Mm. Overall though, I feel like Doctor Strange is a wonderful addition to the Marvel Universe. Excited to see more of it. It is visually captivating, and beyond that, it's a great story. I give it a solid B+. I was very close to an A- minus on this one, but I went with a B plus. Thanks for checking out this Your Movie Friend review. We'll get to the best ever challenge here in a bit. Before we do, though, if you want to hang out a little bit more, you can certainly check out other videos or support the channel. Just click on the info button up here. Uh, you can uh, hit me up on Twitter. Just search for Aaron Dicer, A-A-R-O-N-D-I-C-E-R. -E uh, you can find me other social media outlets as well. Um, and if you like podcasts, 
Search for Sift Pop, S I F T P O P, in your podcast player. Uh, we do a weekly podcast about you know whatever movies are out that weekend, some TV stuff, whatever pop culture stuff kind of pops into our brains. That's Sift Pop, S I F T P O P. All right, on to the best ever challenge where you name the best movie ever in a particular category and also try to identify my choice. Let's go with best visually inventive movies ever. Mine is the one that has the most powerful footprints in the sand since the poem. I should say it ends with the most powerful footprints in the sand since the poem. Yeah, take a guess at mine in the comments. That's an abstract one. I don't know. Maybe nobody will get that one. Uh, take a guess at mine in the comments. You can leave your choice there as well. By the way, if anybody does get it, you will get a point. As always, here's five extra seconds to hit subscribe. Just click the logo right down in this corner.